Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. A couple minutes after six. Glad to see people here. See if there are any changes to the agenda or any public comments that don't fit under something that we're talking about on the agenda. It is a couple things in red on that we're adding later on. Right. Yeah. Purchase order. Uh, yeah, the purchase order and the contract for the Grange roof. Yep. We have not we have that check still, right? Yeah, okay. I don't I don't remember seeing you. Okay. If not, we'll start with town fire department. Well, and what? other comment. Well, I said, anybody has other comments? Oh, I didn't hear. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no. They're waiting so, for under, under yeah, so, certain okay. things. Right. All right. And then under, Sorry. Right. Under public comment, we had the continuation of the road hearing. So that was worn for 6 o'clock tonight. So you can massage that in the beginning of the meeting somehow. Ah, uh, that's right. So I don't think we did receive two additional public comment comments that okay. we should put on the record. Um, All right. Yep. Let's zip. We can. So I guess what we need to do is open that. Hearing. open that hearing it takes just a minute to you know some of these technicalities of how you roll things along take <laughs> open the 37 hearing. steps I make a motion open the hearing on the on roads. roads closing okay so. all right all in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. 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 anybody opposed okay we take a little little side detour to the roads and the hearings we had and looking at roads, um, some that it's a variety of issues, some to be discontinued, some um, changing, some going from three to four. It's a whole variety of issues. So, if somebody's here about their road, everybody here about their road? Wait, look. Yeah, we already talked about what yeah. I had to say. Yeah, you guys, you're set. Right, nothing additional. They're suddenly. I don't have anything additional. Okay. Unless there's a lot of Bob that I need to respond right. to. Right. No, nope, no, nope, I don't think so. We haven't heard from it. Everybody seems to be happy with the decision, what we're doing. So we now, once we act on it, just have to go through the time process that we have to do. Bob. Yes. Um, question for Ron. Um, is 130 feet out where the cedars are? Any portion of the unclassified town highway on your property is discontinued. Uh, okay, but is that where the cedars are? I'm not sure what cedars you're talking about. The well, there's a string of cedars that have failed to all. Right before the turnaround. Uh, uh, no, actually, well, it's, it's yeah, it's before the Where turnaround. the new one's going to be. Well, yeah, yeah, where the new one would be, right? Right, yeah. that, is that your property line? Yeah. I can't, we're not looking at the survey, right. Okay. Right. So it's All just right. from your property line back, I think. All right. So, and uh, have you determined where your turnaround is going to be? Well, we'll work with Norm Andrews on that. It's going to be someplace up in front of that. Okay. But it won't be on your property. Won't be on. No. Home. No. And um, you're going to give up your easement to plow. Is that the correct? Plan? We won't plow that piece anymore. Right. Okay. All right, right. Your, your, your lawn will rest in peace for a winter. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the other two pieces we got of State Forest Parks and Rec objected or recommended that the short 225 feet off Garfield Road that goes to the caboose slash pond yeah, yeah. lot. It's unnamed town highway. Yeah, 40, that's one of our unnamed, right. That, that if it provides access to the water, it should be kept as a public trail. But after the end of the current class war, there's 325 feet to the water. So there is no public access to the pond, to the pond that, right. that they saw in the aerial photo. So gotcha. okay. whether they have to walk 225 feet and then another 300 feet is going to be up to the landowners, not the town after discontinuance. Right. But they could park on Garfield Road on the edge and get up in there if they have permission right, from the landowner. Right. As far as I know, there's no permission or easement from the landowner now. So 
that's still an issue. Whether or not the class four takes you 200 feet in or not, it's still an issue to get yeah. to the pond. Yeah, you still got the gap between the, the yep. end and the pond. Yep, so that was their objection. That's standard okay. verbiage from them. If it does get close to a state land or a public water, they tend to want to keep those right of ways. But in this case, it doesn't get there anyway. Right, so we just drop them back a note and say it, you, you can't get there from here. Yeah. And that the access is just <coughs> as close practically as Garfield Road, which will remain public. Right. Okay. So that was the only comment there. Sterling View, president of the new co op, uh, Paul Nesky. Yeah. He wrote a letter saying he did not object to the extension to grab that loop right. at the end of Sterling View. At least the town might use it from time to time now, but um, that was the proposal. Still up to Ken. Um, Ken does not sell to him until June 30th of next year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. This is the town laying out an easement on top of his property. Right. So yeah, it's still. So the yeah. Ken never objected. I emailed him twice. So, so that's all. Yeah. We instead, about. right. Just easier to go around the loop yeah. instead of building. So yes, yeah, no objection right. on that. Okay. But that's all the public comment. Yeah. So we can close the hearing and go to deliberations if you want. Okay. I guess we need to move to close the hearing, or I just close it. No move. Okay. Second. Um, Second. Third it and fourth it. All in okay. favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Now. For deliberation, let's see. Were you going to draft up a, and you didn't? Yeah, the, that? Okay. the town attorney and uh, and the record will all be smushed together in order to deal with each of the nine roads, and you'll have to look at that at a, another meeting. Okay. Okay, but um, nothing's changed from what we discussed. The no, no, the order happy. you'll have okay. to approve the wording of everything. Right. Okay. <laughs> you can still change your mind if you want to, from what the indication was at the last meeting. Right. Okay. Okay, now we'll go back to the, the regular select board meeting in the agenda and the town fire department. So Ed's been asking for uh, time to discuss any pending questions you have. He proposed two things, which was a, a, an adjustment to the pay rate by rank and also stipends uh, by rank within the fire department. So both of those would affect the the gross salary amount that you have up top, which I think is about 22000 a year for all wages. So if you do those two adjustments, which is increase that by rank hourly, as well as often offer stipends, then you'll, I don't know, $3,000, $4,000 more at least would be added on to the twenty two. Uh, Ed's trying to figure out how to manage his overall increase for next year, FY21, and that is one of the bigger drivers that he was hoping to get resolved sooner than later. I think you're are you scheduled for November or December with the board officially for the whole budget? December, I think. Well, I think it was December. So there's a little little more time to debate that. Um, outside of the meeting, Roger came to my office and suggested something that I think probably is time to share with Ed or the full board about stipends in particular. Well, I, I just didn't care about dividing that money out between just officers and stuff because I feel an officer's spot, that's part of their responsibility. Uh, I would rather see give a dollar amount stipend than let Ed handle it, handle it the way he wants instead of divide it up by the way it was in the proposal. That was my thinking of doing it. And, and I guess the only other thing I have is I guess the loyalty to the town and the volunteers kind of going away the way it looks. Um, I know as our select board people here, we come here most of the time, two or three times a month. And, you know, we swallow up, we do what we have to do. We go out and look at the roads and stuff. And, Man. and you know, for what we get, I just think, um, you know, we volunteer a lot of time too, we don't get paid. That's what my suggestion would be. That, I would give them a thousand dollars for administration fee to fill out their reports and stuff. And so, so do that for whoever the chief is. That's just set. Here's a 
since it's that thousand yeah, yeah. dollars, so here's, here's he handles that thousand dollars for to do all the report, what reports he can do and stuff, and um. And well, what, yeah. what, what I had proposed, and I think you have a copy of it there, was... I, I don't have it with me. Um, 750 for the chief, five, I think it was 500 for the assistant, right. 4 for the captain, and 300 for the lieutenants. And the reason being is they put in extra time above what the other volunteers do. Uh, taking care of paperwork, got one lieutenant that's up there helping work on a truck right now, which is saving the town money rather than sending it to a contractor or a mechanic that's going to charge you 50 to to $100 an hour. Um, we're getting more and more paperwork shoved on us. I get more and more calls from Ron, can you go check this, can you go check that? And I'm down to station three, four, sometimes five days a week. For three or four hours at a time, just trying to keep up with stuff. Um, the day of the volunteer firefighter is gone. Unless you're in a real small community, uh, you've got you've got to give the firefighter some kind of incentive to show up. Uh, it's hard to ask a person to leave work where he's got to either lose lose pay. From take from work, or he's going to use his vacation time to come to help help the community. And I think we should support them. Um, I know in my own case, when I see that the dog catcher makes more money than I do as fire chief uh, and the cleaning woman, uh, that just doesn't set well. Well, they're all making more money than we are, <laughs> so you know it's like. Uh, um, I don't. I mean, I. I think part of what it raises, Ed, is the is the whole issue. When I've talked with a couple of other select boards around, you know, everybody's facing the same thing. Whether whether it's your it's your fire departments, it's your rescue, it's your everything. The the the, the days of volunteering are, you know, it's, and it sort of doesn't matter the reasons. Um, it's just in a changing world, and how um, how sustainable are any of these things? Um, if you know, if we really are, if volunteerism doesn't work, who, let's see who who was. Hmm. I've had so many conversations about so many things in the past week and a half. I can't remember who I had with what. Um, you know, but, but places are going to, uh, you know, um, in, in fire departments, in rescues, in, in having professional full-time people, and then volunteers supplement that. Um, I, you know, it's, um, again, with, with all the costs, looking at the budget this year, uh, people want more and more out of, uh, out of the sheriff's department. And if you're gonna, if you if you're going to get that, then you're gonna have to pay for it. So it's like people want more and more, but nobody wants to. Everybody says their taxes are too high. Um, as I see, you know, Carol here. If if you would, what I think is kind of interesting, is um, is uh, if if you want to get people, I don't know about the rest of you folks, but calling the select board and getting it excited, it's talking about Hyde Park Electric potentially having a 15% rate increase. Um, and I'm going, I'm not, I'm not the electric department, what do you want me to do? Um, so, so it, it, you know, um, I don't know, I wish, I wish there were some simple answers. The, you know, the, the reality is, is that the, um, the amount of money you're talking about isn't that amount of money. If, if it, 
if it takes three hundred dollars to get somebody to do something, well, you know, would they do it for two twenty-five? I, yeah, you know, I mean, you know, you can just, you just, I don't, I don't know, and we don't have anybody from the school board here. But if you want a totally thankless job, oh, go sit on a school board, and you know, I don't know what. I think they may get a thousand dollars a year, right? They, they get the high pay. Um, so, so I don't uh, uh, the. You know, it, it's um, it's difficult, and and everybody uh, again. Wait, how how communities feel about themselves? A while ago, and we had bear in the neighborhood. <laughs> Actually, just a week and a half ago, I think the bear was back in the neighborhood, and I did something on front porch forum and said, you know, we've got to make sure you have your bird fees, da 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 and I'm out past the fire station. I heard from a couple of people that didn't even know we have a fire station, never mind two fire stations in Hyde Park. So 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 you know how how you know the communities have changed tremendously. We we tend to have us older people who fill in on the you know select boards and a lot of the volunteers and all that sort of stuff, and and we're in a mindset and a in a way of doing things that um, that everybody's trying to figure out how to resurrect. How do you get people to feel about community? This Better Connections grant that we've done is all about trying to figure how do you how do you do some things with community? And you get young people will get involved with the school board because, of course, you know, they've got little kids. So that is tends to be their first connection into a, you know, into a community. But, uh, yeah, again, family life is, is so demanding, is so changed. There are so many single parents. Um, you know, it's just where's, where's, the, where's the time? Um, so I don't... I, I mean, I find myself sort of, sort of agreeing with, you know, with Roger that it's just certainly as the, you know, as the, as whoever the chief is, there's certainly you're going to be at the, which makes me, so should I chair the select board, get some more money? <laughs> you know, it sort of goes, yeah, you know, and, and you know, or the chair of the school board, any of that sort of Roger thing. Roger said, how much a year were you willing to? He's going to do a thousand to the chief, and then let him divide that up. Let him divide it up among that what, stuff. Whatever he wants, if he to, wants do to do it that right. way. Divide his office. That's up to him. Well, oh uh, yeah. So the other thing, you know, we we buy you the best equipment there is. We buy all the new trucks now. About years ago, we didn't do this. Everything's always brand new. You guys get. We try to give you all that, and somewhere there's got to be a breaking point. Uh, people have got, you know, if we are, I don't know what's going to happen if we keep going away from the volunteer stuff. And then next thing you know, it'll start with the ambulance people and, um, you know, it's, it's just going to keep going up and up all the time. Well, well unfortunately, that's the, way, that's yeah. the way our society is. Yeah, yeah, but, right. Uh, I mean, you know, you stop and look at what we've got for equipment through grants that have saved the town money and stuff. We're pushed more and more for training. I mean, Roger, right. remember when we started, you went to what, 45 hour class? I understand, I understand all that, and also we ran, but we had to run. We had to buy second hand stuff. We, we bought, we didn't always buy new stuff. It's, um, this county is, is very, very fortunate for what they got to some other little counties. You, I bet um, you go out some of those other counties and you wanted to see the kind of equipment that they got in this county. And this count, and it's all available to you all. So yeah. I mean, anytime you need some a piece of equipment, you you've got eight, you've, not, you've got another seven stations to pull from, and um, it just seems that you know I don't know what what to say, but people are talking. Hard, you know, they yeah. can't pay the taxes. Got to put them up for sale, and something's got to give somewhere, or. Okay, do we have to make a decision on this right now? No, I think and, and, and thought we just have it that we can just, if we got some more questions and then... It, it, my, my, my thought of thing was just to take it to the town meeting and see what the people would say. 
Would that be wrong? No, you could do it no. that way. No. But what do you, I mean, that's, that's kind of what I was thinking yeah. in a way. My, my only concern was to come down tonight and answer any questions no. you had. Yeah, no, right. Okay. That's um, right. You just go on the executive of, board, and, the, and I know I Dave's right. tried to answer them. I'm moving in paperwork, but I don't have the paper. He doesn't fully understand either. all did, of it. So. What was the? Oh, there was total of, of how much that you were asking for? Uh, um, for, for the officers, three, I think, three, I think all together, wasn't it? Around twenty-five, three. Yeah, I think it was around twenty-five. Twenty-five. Yeah, about that. I know that's not a lot of money, but. You know how it goes after that, then another couple of years, going to be more and more and more. Well, well and then just and, and, just finally, North High Park is going to decide, well, let's see how that works, and they're going to want it, and that's well, no, they, they decided they, they called. They didn't one, now. One person called me and said that yeah. now they weren't going to do it now. Right. <laughs> now. Yeah, now. I mean, so we start off at a thousand dollars. I think that's reasonable for now, and I, go from there. Well, yeah. I, mean, I mean, when I put in the proposal, I put it in for the chief 750, so I wouldn't be above the select board. But, um, I mean, a lot of the towns around are doing the same thing. They're paying their officers for the extra work that yeah. they do. Yeah. No, it is. It, well, they've got a bigger tax base than we have. But don't you do most of the paperwork, don't you? I do, yeah, most of the paperwork. But the guys do a lot of other stuff for me. But, I mean, Realistically, really, the way it is now, I could be down there 40 hours a week and not get everything done. With the paperwork, the phone calls that I have, John's found it, finding out now that he's chief. Um, yeah. Your yeah. buddy over there in the corner keeps calling me with stuff and, and everything. It's just getting busier and busier. And well, and it's, it, you know, and it's, the same thing ha happens with the roads, okay? You know, the feds push more down on the state, and the state pushes on, and now, again, looking at a major project. Now, now if you're going to do a bunch of culverts, it's all about the runoff and what you have to change, and it's fancy equipment, so you have to hire a contractor to come in to assess it all because maybe Burlington owns the equipment and can do it, but I'd say that's the only community in this state that's large enough to justify that kind of technology so you have to hire somebody to come in and and do that work on all the culverts first you know and the designs have to be so all the you know and half the culverts are now too big for small towns to have the equipment to do it it's just it's like <laughs> every everything is going through dramatic change and and we're Again, just as the fire department's trying to figure it out, the, the 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 fast squad and everybody's trying to figure it out. The sheriffs, everybody's going. You know, how do we, you know, how do we do this? If you're gonna if you're gonna get good people, and again, I know it doesn't, you know, three hundred dollars, but it's <coughs> it's, well, it's not as much yeah. that it's in that it's that amount of money, but it's an acknowledgement and it's a thank you, and that's in that's important in the world. Roger's almost halfway there. Yeah, yeah. So, so let's let's. We have any more questions for are you? North Hyde Park wants to chime in. Feel free. Who did give oh, us any about stipends or? Yeah, yeah, or just the. We we had an officers meeting and we decided against it. Um, both the assistant chief and I, and we can both we can both sit here and tell you it's a twenty twenty five hour a week job for yeah. us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on top of what you do for your normal work, for your, your normal occupation. Right. But it's, it's one of those situations where I can see down the road, uh, I can see those hours going on. Yeah. And the drawback is, is I keep looking at it saying, where do you draw, draw, draw the line on public safety? Right. You know, how do you look at, look what happened to two children just this past weekend. Right. I mean, granted, the fire department was, it, there in just minutes, but it's a situation where you put a price on a life, but in the same respect, you got to be able to pay your taxes. <laughs> well, so, well, that, that, that's right, and how and how one. rapidly, as you say, in, in that case, and 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 parents who are involved in that sort of thing. And so the way know. we've looked at it is, I know while I'm chief, uh, we won't be having stipends, but who's, like you said, who's to say down the road? Yeah, and. Yeah. If we do, of course, in our situation, we would incorporate that right into 
if we were to do it, we incorporate it into our, our operating budget. Right. Because you know, right. we take care of our own payroll stuff. But it, it's, if a person wants to be an officer in a fire department, uh, quite a few of them, I'm sure, are in the same boat. Quite a few of them down, that are firefighters, they're really good firefighters. I don't think they really know what it takes nowadays sure, right. to be yeah. an officer. The times yeah. have changed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just a responsibility, yeah, too. A uh, huge responsibility. You know, the right. you got, could have 30 you, guys that you could get a letter like I did last year that they were going to pay airfare and everything to Buffalo, New York on one of the structure fires, I guess. They didn't want it in writing. They wanted to put me on the stand, and Bank of America was going to put me up for a night up in Buffalo, fly up. How do you charge for that? They said all expenses be paid. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm losing. You're losing. Yeah. You know, forty-five dollars yeah. now. <laughs> so right. you know, and it, it's because I'm where I'm at right now, and I'm yeah. cheap. So it's yeah, it's okay. It's going to be a full-time job down the road. So yeah, 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 it is. I've got all I wanted. I guess yeah. we're going to we're do this when he comes back with the budget and have an answer for it. Well, that or we may talk about it. We got a couple of other things in the in executive session, and ha you know they're just a, yeah, we have got it, and we can share it with Dave too, even though he knows it's it. Not gonna be here. No, it's no, I don't think we're not. What I'm looking for is to try to figure out what, what, to, what to put in your budget. Numbers. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we'll. Okay. we'll um, if we have an answer for you before the budget time. We'll yeah, fine. we'll tell you. Right. If not, well, then we'll flex it in the budget as we. Give that little flexibility, as as I say, it's just boy. There, there's seemingly little requests that are that are now touching on obviously really major issues that we're all that we're all dealing with. You know that that what is what is the sustainability, and if and if this is happening, then what is, you know, what's what's the path that communities like Hyde Park and Johnson and uh, you know in Morrisville, what's the path that we need to start thinking about taking? You know, do you end up, um, you know, you know, with a couple of towns together having a full-time chief who is, you know, that's that's going to do a. 40 hour a week paperwork for everybody and the other stuff. You know, I mean, is that, is thinking down the road, is that realistically is something we need to start, we need well, to start I know thinking Cambridge about. Cambridge and Johnson had talked about that, hiring a guy 40 hours a week, 20 hours for Cambridge, 20 yeah. hours for Johnson. And um, I guess they, at this point, have dropped it and are continuing with, with the way they're doing. Um, but you take some, well, like under El Jericho, they have two full-time people now. Yeah. And it's mainly to take care of paperwork, take care of the trucks, the equipment, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Right now, we do on a volunteer basis. Right. You know, and, 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 the, and the realistically, if you do that, it may be easier to get volunteers because you don't sort of end up with the expectation of there's all this extra stuff that you have to do. You're doing the training, but you're just really going out and, and doing the, if you will, the work, not all the... Well, uh, unfortunately, with the way society is now, you're never going to see the volunteer like it was. Right. I mean, we're, we're hurting up here. If you go down to Pennsylvania, for example, in the last 10 years, their volunteer personnel statewide has dropped 40 percent yeah oh, I, yeah <coughs> okay well this isn't very cheery is it <laughs> <laughs> okay we'll um we'll we'll let you know what we come up with it okay okay and and appreciate it and i and again i think i think all of you know it's not that we don't um we don't appreciate all the work that everybody puts in. It's just trying to come up with a come up with a balance. I think I think Roger's probably got a good idea here. Okay. Anything else with fire departments while we're on fire departments? Um, you want to skip to number four? Why not? Okay. That is fire <laughs> it is the fire department. We'll just we'll just lump fire departments together. 
Um, as far as the vehicle insurance, yeah, our carrier will not go full coverage. Right. As far as if you wreck a 2005, yeah, they'll buy a 2020 outright. They will cover the truck for its resale value, which okay. what I was told was they would go the, with the trucks that we run. Of course, they don't get much mileage on them. They go with high book on them. But so I've got the lady at the local agency. She is checking into because I'm not. I deal with cars a lot, but not tr big trucks like that. She's going to check, see if she can get the current uh, assessed value of each truck. I, okay. I gave her all the years, the mileage yeah, okay. on them and everything. So she's good there. She's also going to look into an insurance company that does do that. She's heard that they do I, it, but she's also heard. I think we're going to find it so rates. expensive it's called forget it. Yeah, the rates, yeah. like, I guess it's sure. just like, she said in our situation, don't be a best price if it's between twenty five thirty thousand dollars $30,000 yeah. for the fleet. And yeah, and well, that doesn't work in your better, be, better to put the money aside to buy the new truck. Yeah, you know, than yeah, to give it to a insurance company. Right, you know? right. And the, the chance of the totaling, completely totaling a truck is, in our situation, isn't as high as it would be if it was on the road every day. Right. You know, like a town truck or something like that. Right, right. We're in a different yeah. situation. Um, you know, see down here you had uh, a draft disposition of assets, MOU. I wasn't quite prepared for it. <laughs> I didn't no. know what you, where you were looking for. That's right. Well, you, you haven't gotten the notes from... I was trying to find out what happened with the Eden meeting and they're not publishing their minutes. So. They, they don't have any notes out there, so Ron doesn't have any. I told them what I remember. I said, really, I think our, there were little, there were minor things minor, that we, that yeah. we, there wasn't anything. The big, the big issue was what about the insurance? Because written in the MOU is that it's full replacement huh. value. Yeah. And I think we've all reached the conclusion, oh, I don't think that's what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Like I say, if we do that, my budget will have oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's right. And that's where, because Ed, again, with your old, obviously with a brand new vehicle, you do replacement costs. But with all your other vehicles, it's, I assume it's got to be the same as North Hyde Park. Yeah, that's wrong. I'm not sure. Yeah. that with the older vehicles in the Hyde Park Fire Department, they are not insured for full replacement. No, right. no, no. The, we have a couple different ways they do it. You're talking about actual cash value or the resale and at the time right. of loss is what you, right. your insurance people say. Yeah. Our coverage is broken up under the VLCT into multiple parts. So you have the truck and then you have the equipment and then you have the right. auto loss, so it all sort of combines yeah. into yeah. a big mess. Yeah. But the most important thing for well, how they look at, they call it modified actual cash value, is to have a good inventory of the trucks and the parts and pieces so that you can sort of prove where you're starting from on the negotiation on a settlement. So including the assessment of the truck and all that other stuff. So I don't know how often you all do that, both of you collectively, but you have a good inventory, you know it's on the truck, you know it's slowly yeah, conditioned. Yeah, we have yeah. Yeah, complete inventory of everything. What the yeah. condition is, the right. truck, you know, then it gets easier with the insurance company, but it's not guaranteed, it's a negotiated yeah. you know, to a certain degree value. Yeah. yeah. So that that is the that's the significant change that has to happen in the MOU that yeah. we're not insuring <coughs> all the equipment for yeah. replacement value. Yeah, I think have, currently yeah, probably with the different underwriters, language will have to come up with a definition to work with more than an abbreviation. You know, what is yeah, yeah. what do right, you do. want from the insurance? And they call it whatever they want to call it. But the two towns need to be in agreement of how that's calculated, which it looks like it's a depreciated value basically, plus parts and pieces, which would be a separate. Somebody separate yeah, the parts costs. and yeah. pieces are separate, right? Yeah, the equipment will be separate from the, yeah. from the truck. Right. So I try, and we may not be able to get both departments consistent, but at least knowing that we're as close as we can to the same kind of coverage, right, protects right. the taxpayers. So. Right. So I, I think, I think we are with that. So, so we'll. Well, yeah. After nudge, we see, board, see if you can nudge Eden to send him a copy of the, of the notes, because I know she was taking notes. <clears throat> yes. Right. Yes. 
she was, did notice that. Yeah, yeah uh, that she was taking them all down, and she had us all there and got the right names and was over and being I can, careful. I can check so them to see if what they have from that meeting. Yeah. You know. Well, and, yeah. and the changes, and several people were taking all the changes that we were making. Right. On it. As, well, as again, none of them. The, uh, the, other, the other thing that we got into was talking about whether the water district, the language, was in there or not. In case you, you know, if, you, if, you, if we got closed, the North Hyde Park Fire Department, what would happen to the land? And we <clears throat> ended up realizing there needed to be some some comment about the property belonging to the water district because if 50 years from now they did it, people would go, what? <laughs> How did the water district suddenly get involved in this? So we need, we need some place in the MOU for it to, that just sort of is history that it's there. It's not to involve them, but just so yeah. that... Uh, yeah, they definitely didn't want to sign off on no, it. No, no, so that they... an opening paragraph or it's, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and we found a way that, and, and again, whoever's got, we okay. figured out how to yep. do that. But. So I think now, now that we know what we yeah, are doing... Yeah, the other thing they wanted, all the, they wanted a line for all the select board to sign, not just two or yeah. three. Yeah, yes. right. That was one of them. Yeah. 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 And there was one question. That was, was it, that all, were all set on the MOU? Yeah, I think okay. so. Yep. Um, on the bill that I just brought down, for the fourteen thousand dollars, I just got that from Ralph, and uh, the because we asked for eight and eight, yeah, which is sixteen. But the more balls you buy, it's one of those deals. The more you buy, the cheaper the you cheaper order. it gets. Okay. So we went ahead and ordered all sixteen, gotcha. which we have in that position now. Okay. And the total the total of the invoice came to fourteen thousand dollars. Okay. So actually, High Park's half would be seven. So we saved we saved a thousand dollars there. And something that was needed. We do we do our best. We oh yeah, no, no, and everybody does, dollars. right? Okay. So that's I think that was the question you had, Ron. And whether or not there's going to be another purchase, or you're done with the sixteen. Yeah. That well, the other purchase was going to be towards the new air packs, which was and kind of if he would come up with the same, right. and then they would take the rest that they needed out of there. Money market. No, I was just looking for dollars uh, next year. If that completes the current year that, purchase, that completes the current year purchase. So then, yeah. next July or something, you'll have another request for. Well, that it's the last select board meeting. The friend and I were here. Uh, I think Roger mentioned two years of the eight thousand. Right. Right. So, and Brent looked checked on our two point twos, which are I picked up at nineteen. 91. <laughs> <laughs> like you're reaching for a 50 or it's, something. No, as soon as it was 19 something, you yeah, know, we're in trouble. <laughs> we're really pushing it on. So uh, that's why he, he was thinking, well, what we do is look into the 2.2s and go to the 4,500s, you know, five more 45, because you have to have one air pack for right. every, every person. person. In the truck. Yeah. So you want to keep the 8,000 for next year, 2021? Yeah. That was what. Yeah. I mean, we're going to yeah. ask if that would work for you. Yeah. And yeah. I does, mean, that's what we planned, so it's fine. And I, I need to talk to Eden about that. And then what we will do is we'll raise the difference because it's going to be more than the sixteen thousand. But we'll raise the difference to for the five packs. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's okay. All. That's my only question. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But what's in that account now? Do you know. I think Allison going to email that out after tonight's meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. Okay. We were good. We're good with fire. Okay. <laughs> Only ne next time Hyde Park will get the right meeting time. We got there a half hour early, so we got a good tour of all the trucks. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay. Hyde Park electric rates. As I say, oh, Carol, people definitely decided they wanted to talk to the select board about the electric rates, which 
We said, sure, we're, we're, we're happy to. Um, have, have any of the rest of you been hearing from people about <coughs> either what you I, want I on this? Heard, I haven't heard nothing, but I haven't been home much either. But. Well, that's one way to do it. <laughs> 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 and then if you don't answer your phone, that'll help, that'll, that'll but, help uh, too. I, I, um, I haven't heard nothing. I've only heard a couple, and, and I didn't even realize it myself had gone up. I well, mean, it has a, you've, it's a proposed rate, right, Carol? Yes. Do you want well, yeah, come on. Yeah, come on. Come on up, Carol. Because that's, that's what I told people first of all. I said, this is a proposed. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I said and the this process is, why. is rigorous. Yeah. Yeah. Water and sewer, of course, are not regulated. But electric is regulated. <laughs> Makes up for the rest of them. Yes. Yeah. Right. The bad news is we need the rate increase. We wouldn't have asked for it if we had needed it. We haven't had one in nine years. And in that nine year period of time, I put something together for you guys okay, good. to give you some comparisons and to show you also that um, I think we're doing an efficient job. Our staff is working. Your gigantic staff. Our right. gigantic staff yeah. is maximizing. One of the things I need to tell you is we, um, we were in the middle of the pack on rates. Right. And we're rolling up together with Green Mountain Power where they've got their 15 point, almost 16 percent base rate over three years. And that is a base rate. They have a special rate structure with the department. Um, so if they have extra expense in power costs or storms, it goes above. So we really don't know where we'll be with them. I know on the lower usage, we're 17% less than that. Okay. After our increase. Um, but it's hard to compare rates because they have a plethora of rates and we have a few. And they structure them for different industries and of course we have very few industries, which right. yeah, the bulk of ours is on residential. Um, Washington Electric had a huge increase recently. Vermont Electric is, I talked to Rebecca Town the other day, they're going to go in for an increase next year. And many of the municipals are going to start rolling their increases in, so over time we'll fall to the middle of the pack. There are three main components to what we do. The hidden part is the safety. Uh, we have to be OSHA compliant. We have to operate in a safe manner. We, that means equipment and training and all the things that you have. And it's a very competitive market for labor. Um, we're non-union. We've got fantastic employees. And we've got a few of them and we're using technology to keep it that way. But it does put a burden on particularly Karen Westcomb and John Stray. And they are, they are platinum level employees. So with that said, it's not going to get better, but it's going to even out over time. The technology that we put in, the training, the staff, and holding the line on pay and getting as much productivity as we can, I feel good about our future. I really do. And I ask for your support. I ask for everybody's support. Um, we'll get there. The bad news for Vermonters is it just keeps going up. We don't have... We have a, on the good side with the utility, Public Utility Commission and the staff, I've gotten to know them in this process. And they've done some good things for us. They've given us that community solar tariff, which gave us $76,000 to put toward our billing system. They've been good to us and they're yeah. good, fair-minded people. But I think that if I can speak truthfully, because there's so much legislative and emotional impact on the department, it just adds to the cost. Um, if it was an electric, if it was, if it was a public utility commission elected from by the people, I think you'd find less emotion to the process. So we all have the same regulatory and limited resources in the state. We've changed power suppliers. We're beginning to negotiate some good contracts. We're going to stabilize. The other hard spot that's coming into the future is 
our friends over in Mars will have dams and that's and, and hydro and that stabilized their rates significantly. They have commercial that stabilize their residential rates. But they're at a crossroads on their hydro. So expect some calls over there. It will cost them a lot of money to decommission and they've lost a lot of revenues. They're gonna lose a manager. It's, you know, in the state we're getting we're getting at a crossroads. I think we're in a good position if we can hold our staff and hold tight. And I ask for your support on that. Um, I think all is well with us other than this hard spot. I would have preferred to have had a rate increase in between 2017 and 18, but we had a deadline. If we didn't convert our billing system, we would not have gotten that grant to pay for the billing system. So we had to put it off. It, it hits hard, but it's going to hit everybody. It hits in pieces when you're not regulated, and I would rather have it that way. But when you're regulated, the cost of that process is heavy. It really is. So you want your rates to last as long as they can. And we're going to try to do that. Uh, there will be a meeting here. You can tell anybody that calls you. The public hearing with the department is here October the 29th at 6.30. There will be a notice in the newspaper and um, I'll have the man that did the financial side from VEPSA and I'll, I don't think, um, I think I'll do the power supply because I have to pay somebody from Massachusetts to come. The 29th? The 29th, October the 29th. Um, now, the, uh, we also at that time are going to have a hearing for the public, uh, for the integrated resource plan. <coughs> that's the other <coughs> thing we had to go into. And that's uh, showing the state the condition of your distribution system, your sub-transmission, and also your plans for power supply. That is a rigorous process too. So we're gonna have a public hearing on both. The document should be finished by the end, probably the end of this month, next month. We have been in more hearings and testimony than you can imagine. And the worst part of that is we have to be right. Because when I go and we say that this is the way it is, we have to swear an oath. That makes me doubly cautious. Mm -hmm. So, with that said, I ask for your support. We'll get over this hurdle. But everybody is coming around the bend to join us, and some are ahead of us. Um, the other bad news is I've heard that the state is going to double the Tier 2 requirements, which means that we thought Waterhouse, which is... I can give you some more assurance that it's paying its way. I had to undergo a um, rigorous hearing process on the financial side of Waterhouse in order to give back on the pilot for those low-income people. Okay. Yep. I had to prove to them that we had 2.616 cents. So it's more than paying its way, but again, it's our children that will benefit the most because we've got it, we own it, and the costs keep doing this. But if they double tier two, meaning you have to have new renewable generation in your service territory, the value of Waterhouse will double, wrecks are gonna go up, but it also puts us in a place where we gotta go get another one, probably in about four years, or something equivalent. Um, well, one of uh, Carol and, and and again, it's talking to a, to a couple of of other town. It's um, I didn't until many years ago. I went into the Senate, realized that I was going to get one of my variety of nicknames. This was a more positive one. Um, was, was Queen of the Munis because yeah. uh, the Lamoille region, because you got Hardwick in there as well. It's sort of like we're where all the Munis and the and the co-ops are. There aren't that many around yeah. the, around the rest of the state, and you know, and and the competition for good for good employees for keeping them the whole yeah. thing is there, and it's just as with talking about small fire departments, the rescue squads, the the question long term are the viability of small munis. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, and how do, you know, how do, how do we hang on that, on to that independence? Yeah. You know, it's the, and, and if you're going, you know, the co-op does our, is again, it's thinking long term, how do, and again, because the, the, the investments that Hyde Park Electric has made over the years is why, you know, and our power hardly ever goes out in Hyde that's Park. It, that's the thing, that's the thing See, that I learned when I came here, because I'm a co-op person. Yeah. And the one thing that I've learned is safety is inherent to us, but we don't talk about it much. But we have to pay for it. We have to invest right. in it. The public puts reliability first. Mm -hmm. And they'll forgive a little bit of increase in rates. They want their power on right. all the time. Yeah. We have that. If we were to do anything in conjunction with somebody else, there's such a discrepancy in, let's be blunt, Green Mountain Power, over time, we'd be paying more with less reliability. Yep. VEC, yep. we'd be paying the same or less with less reliability. Our job, my job, I see my job is to train, develop, and create the infrastructure so when it's my time to go to the barn, I've got staff here that will carry on. Right. right. And I intend to do that. That's my commitment. And I've got quality staff, and they can. I'm, I feel very strongly about that. Right. Now, but, um, we do have to work differently. And I may take the time now to talk about leaving VEPSA. In case anybody wants to know, why did we leave VEPSA effective November? Our board saw one big risk with VEPSA. They have a lot of debt that we get no benefit from. But if a system, any of their systems goes under, we're responsible for that debt. And Just they would not change the their whole, structure. Right. Okay. They wouldn't change their structure. So we didn't have a choice to come, to come out. Now, if we need their services, they can build us out. And we'll be able right. to do that. Right. We also rely on the EC. We use their engineers. And if it gets to a higher level that they don't have, then we contract engineers. But that's how we survive, by relying on our neighbors. We have our meters tested in Morrisville, rely on their meter guy. We rely on engineering at BEC. Electric utilities around the country have learned all of them, big, small, you gotta rely on each other. And that's what we do, just like that. You guys all rely on each other. And that's inherent to a utility. That's how we survive. We don't compete. What we try to do is make each other strong. But I do, I, you know, I, I worry about all our sister utilities. Uh, BART, for example, yeah. all their staff just left. And you just, you know, you've got to, you got to build your backfield. I'm a big football fan. you got to get your backfield built up so that somebody can come in and take the plug. <coughs> so together, I think we can get this done. I know we can. Any questions? Um. I'll, I'll have Ron send tomorrow a uh, particular letter, and somebody's done their homework. And I had a I had a long conversation with uh, with Tom Shepard, and one of his concerns was he said, you know, looking looking at the statistics in in town, that we have a very high percentage of folks that are retired. I agree. You know, and I said, that that's true. I said, and you know why that is? And he said, no. I said, okay. I said, I want to take you to Sterling View. And he kind of went, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why we do have, you know. Yeah. Um, I said, which which isn't, I, you know, but it, it's just why that number, when you look at number of retired folks in this community, is a very high percentage. One of the things we've not, you know, we're, as we're trying to get through all this regulatory and water, and wastewater and people at the state coming down and giving us no choice. Absolutely no choice. Once we get past that, then we can get into it. I think really getting some efficiency going. About the time you got here. <laughs> um, but we do it all together. Yeah. We gotta do it all together. Good to see you. Um, with that said, we'll get past it. Yeah, and, and, and I'll, uh, 
I'll get right give you a copy of this because I think he you, um, you you can well he's probably talking. He's to done you. a he yeah yeah he's done a lot of he's done a lot of homework but it's talking you you sort of you have part of it too as you say some people have gotten increased in other people you know plus he's put his numbers in well, here. Then people start by assuming that you're getting that much of an increase. And I said you know it's just a process. They, when they send the notices out from Perry Rights, they compare 600 kilowatt hours. Guess what you find if you look at everybody's rates? That's a sweet spot that dips down. So when you're comparing, if you look hours at like this, everybody else's rates when you get to 600 yeah. does this. So that when you get that, you think, well, that's all their rates. No, they may be higher all the way up to that point. Our average customer is 400. And okay. most everybody goes for a high lower end, and that's where the lower income is. Um, we hope to continue to do programs that help the lower income. Right. Right. And that's that's where my sweet spot is. Yeah. That's who we gotta help. Okay. Things. Well, just people had asked, I figured, okay, let's I you know, when people want to talk about something here, we'll give them some information. And, and this is this is a great we'll yeah, well and this is a good opportunity because this is you know, so people look at it and okay, we've talked about it. it it's um, I, I think you're right. Getting folks to come October 29th and be able to talk about it, yeah. get a bunch of, yeah. is uh, is uh, is. Can I show Tom Shepard be here? Well, I bet he will. Yeah. Okay. He's good. He does homework. Great. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. I'm gonna go home and have dinner. Okay. It's a good idea. No. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. My name's Tom Shepard. Oh, oh you're Tom. Hi, Tom. Did he say hello to you? Okay. He doesn't see you. No, he did. Right. I'm that's, right here. It, that's right. Okay. I just provided a copy of yep. my documentation with, uh, well, the, my statement on the documentation tomorrow or like today. I hope you found it. In yep. Well. Yep. We've got it. If it's necessary for, uh, for me to provide the references, footnotes, etc., I'll be glad to do so. It wasn't as if I was writing a term paper. Uh, but in any event, um, I would encourage people on the board to review it. Yeah. Do your own comparisons. Do your own fact searching or uh, fact checking, if you like. Um, again, I could provide the documentation to justify well, and you've got the, there. the good website there, and, too. And um, I'll be glad to provide it. If you don't mind, I need to leave to get my kid from school. Oh, sure. Yeah. No, you should anyway, have told that you were here. I didn't, yeah. I didn't realize that was you, Tom, because we haven't ever met before. We just talked on the phone, so it's like, no. In any case, I would encourage you, please go through the documents, about two pages in a little bit. And uh, if there's any questions on my numbers on it, you can contact yep. me. And again, if you need that da documentation, I'll be glad to provide it. Have a good evening. Thank you. Enjoy your visit with the daughter. No, we gotta go to school. Oh. <laughs> um, okay. Okay, we took care of all the highway projects for you, okay? <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> We're just giving you a bad time. I got a splash of and get back in that tree. <laughs> <laughs> okay, highway projects. Contracting work versus adding more construction to the highway department. Okay. So. Just on here. Okay. The budget for highways not, not been presented yet, but we need to work on it. So one of the things that the board and the highway I've talked about in the past, which is maybe a little different than what Mark French's angle was, or is now, is to look at each, I say activity. So you can look at the highway budget and you'll see a lot of parts and pieces, you know, labor, culverts, gravel, uh, paving, whatever. And in Mark's learning, the way that Mark looks at his need to do during this, the work season, Winter sort of over here, but the work season is by program. So the, the roads need certain things, stormwater improvements, paving improvements, um, uh, uh, reclaiming the right-of-way. And each of those things has different 
means and methods might include all of those in one project, like Center Road. Center Road includes stormwater, giving back the right of way, right. paving, uh, drainage improvements, uh, turnarounds potentially would be involved. So it's harder to use the old budgeting system we found out this year and try to put that into more of a programming budget. And I, and I think that's what we're talking about, is that over time we've added contracted work or contracted rented leased equipment to get those things done that need to be done. And just give you an example, on 2019 summer paving, we had, it, we had contracted paving, we had the highway crew using the drag box, we had water and sewer working on a temporary winter repair with a new material, you know, concrete type patch. And then we had the one inch overlay on Church Street, and, you know, tons of stuff, all different line items, nothing identified ahead of time as we're gonna do paving in 2019 that's gonna cost $200,000. That's how you budget, you budget 225,000 a year for paving. So this question on the on the agenda is is what and, and I'm struggling because Mark has different ideas. He, he looks at small road projects and said, "Oh, that's that's the that's shim, sh, uh, shimming up the road on Johnson Street extension for for plowing. You know, we're going to lift up those drop shoulders and bring them up so the blade can run nice on them. And that's a small almost a small road project. East Main Street is uh, overlay paving." of two inches or whatever they put on there, which is different than what he did with his drop box and he had to buy a bunch of parts and pieces to get the machine working and then, you know, whatever. So what, the question on this is what do, what does the board see as a, as sort of a next step? I almost see it as a budget change almost to a certain degree uh, where we say either by project or by program versus line item. So if you say, let's, let's work center road, for example, what is that gonna cost? And, and we know the parts and pieces, but we haven't quite got to what that's gonna cost and how do you use it in this year's budget when Mark comes in November, December? Um, okay, so we have stormwater line, we have a small road project line, we have a culvert line, which doesn't include any labor. It, seem, it <laughs> seems to me it's, it's, it, it's what you almost need is, is to if you will, is to come up with a master checklist that has all those things on it, and then every project you go through and check what you're going to have to use on that project. Yeah, yeah. So right now they're all scattered about yeah, in, yeah, the, in exactly. the budget, so you don't. Uh, right, and it's it seems to me it's almost if you if you did that for a year you you'd start to develop what lines you would want to have in a budget. You know, it's almost like I don't. I don't know if we know how you'd want to change a budget right now to show this yeah, stuff. Yeah, I don't. I, I think you know, it's almost like uh, we have a, a purchase order here for the server. So upstairs server that runs all the parts and pieces and communicates with the outside world is failing. So our tech group people came in under our IT line. They did a cost estimate. They have a proposal for nine thousand dollars. But we don't have a server replacement budget. We have the IT consultant line, we have the parts and pieces, and then we have this miscellaneous supplies to make up the difference. And that's the purchase order. So and Mark's done the same thing with, you know, if you guys if the board wanted to see center room. Right. We have the inventory done. I I I don't know if we'd ever get a center road project. You know, we we started to account for it because I wanted to see what the what their paving was gonna cost. So we have a good you know, that little shim, right. whatever you want to call it, the, the plow paving, patch paving that I've called it for a couple of residents. What did that actually cost? So we're gonna we're gonna tie we're gonna tie that up and see what that little exercise over that three miles or two and a half miles cost the town. And you'll see that number, but that wasn't in the budget. We just took it from the paving line and then the rest right. of it went on East Main Street. Yeah, but you, you, you're going to have to bring it over too because it may have cost the town this year, but if you go and pave that, you got that shim built up your four inches on there. You're not going to use so much blacktop as right. when you want. Yeah, so is it, is it part of the bigger project? And I, I told Mark, I said, if, you, if we yeah. just keep plodding along and you, with the current budget, this, this will be easier way to go about it. 
here is your budget. <laughs> Figure out how far you can get with that money during the year and code it appropriately. So paving material goes to paving. Mm -hmm. The labor for that paving, like on the patch on Center Road, is in labor. If you paid it for contract, like on East Main Street, labor and material are included in a contract for East Main Street. So you're gonna have a bunch of money coming out for East Main Street that's both. Our highway budget makes paving look longer if you use a budgeted labor, because all you do is paint for the material and maybe rental equipment. So you get more mileage for the dollar, new dollars, uh, when the highway <coughs> does work. But Mark's also debating this fifth guy, sixth guy question about the crew. And for example, we, when we get to culverts, large culverts that you have to go down, we don't have the equipment for that. Right. So the initial response is you hire it out. But we don't have a contracted equipment line. You know, so that's where you take small equipment road project, that 9,000 a year, we kind of borrow from that for the contracted work. But 28 culverts, that could be $200,000 worth of contracted work if we had a contract yeah, to do the whole thing. Right. And we don't want to do that necessarily, so Mark's next thought is, well, let's rent the piece of equipment. I, I can only think of two culverts on that road that the backhoe couldn't reach. That's wrong. This is a concept thing, but yeah, so when we get to those points, do we contract out those two spots because that might be 5,000 bucks, or do we rent the piece of equipment for 5,000 and maybe get a little bit more work done because the equipment's here for the whole week, and then we yeah, can go for like that. You you're thing. better off to run it for a whole month. Yeah. Or five or six thousand, yeah. yeah, because you'll get one week free. So anyway, that, those and that's what this <laughs> right. discussion's about because we don't really have a good. We, we have we have that nine thousand a year, which is the small road projects, but we don't have a good line to. The simplest way of doing this is SCP, small construction project, and then you can tie in whatever you want for a number, two thousand dash twenty. And everything is done on that project. You break it out. Labor, X amount of dollars. Material, culverts, X amount of dollars. Gravel, X amount of dollars. You can keep track of it every day. Yeah. So we, and and we, that's think, the simplest way to do this. Yeah, I think, I think we sort of started that exercise this year with the center road because under the small road projects, we only had $9,000. But we created a new line code under a small road project for Center Road, so that we could track and see okay. what those expenses yeah. were. Yeah. And we had the we had rental of a the, the roller, the compactor. We had some repairs to the box, the, the, drop, the drop box. But we'll know pretty pretty good. Uh, Mark would have time when he's working on it. If you want to know the cost of that repair job, but Mark's immediate need is to have the money available for when the crew doesn't have all the parts and pieces for a job. And I, I think we're talking about what you're talking about is having some built up a little bit more, maybe under that small road projects line that is maybe a little higher for those contracted exercises, whatever project he's working on, whether it's the right. two, two culverts on center road could be just hit the small road project so the two small culverts and the stormwater reserve is another, another source he'd have access to on, a, on a, an improvement to the outfall of those culverts, for example. So I think that's all, uh, to keep things as simple as possible, I think we're looking at what, and this is a question for Mark to propose and for you all to discuss when you see his budget, what is he thinking about for these contracted, either equipment or contracted contractors to help out on projects? Um, and, and be clear about all those things. I, and I think the line striping is contracted, the brush, Cutting out to the right of way is contracted. Yeah. Uh, the, the storm vac is contracted, but highway has to be there for that, for the village streets. You know, so we do a lot of contracted support because we don't have that type of equipment. And it seems to work okay. But I, I still think you get better mileage to the dollar if the highway has more you know, leased or rented equipment that they operate potentially and they can get more work done with the right piece and then the equipment goes away and we don't carry it as capital yeah i think that's what we're trying to think yeah. of is is and the missing piece is that one line item on that small projects thing to beef that up a little bit mm -hmm. and then and not putting a number on it but mark needs to tell the board what he's thinking about because he only has so many weeks of good weather anyway uh, he rattled he rattled off a list of 
six different ma sort of major projects that took his time for two or three weeks out of our 12 weeks. Yeah. I don't know how he got it all done, but he, he did it all. And, you know, I think he's, th he's beginning to see some of the gaps in, in his... In oh, his they did, boys did an excellent job. Excellent job. Yeah, but there's a lot of things that we're checking off really fairly quickly, which is good, and then things that make it easier the next time, whether it's the right piece of equipment or whether it's getting the roads in a good shape so they're easier to maintain or plow. And we, I mean, I think, I think Mark's feeling pretty good about the inventory, the road network in, in total. A lot of towns have three or four spots around that we're concerned about and you know are gonna be a problem at some point, usually spring, you know, mud season or whatever. We don't, we have the benefit of not having those things which is mostly due to the, the concerted work to put good gravel and good drainage in the roads to do it the right way the first time, and you don't go back there again. So giving him these, I think this is one of these last tweaks to his, how he operates the department is that small, making better use of the small road projects line with potentially a little more money in there for the leased equipment, rented equipment, or, or outside is, assistance. To I don't know if this is off base, but and, and that is one hell of a good idea to do that, you know what it costs. But why aren't we doing that with projects that the town's doing? So we know what that project costs the town. Yeah, so there's certain projects we go right down to the penny on, and other ones we don't. So like I, I couldn't tell you exactly how much the, the cutting the brush to the ropes, I know it was $6,400 for the rental piece of equipment, mm -hmm. but I don't know what the time to you know, run somebody up to the equipment, to run it. Who is running it? We don't. We, we, that's not a separate program. Right. That's buried in the labor and benefits right. thing over in the other. And, and that's why I say we should have a sheet with that cost us, so we can say yeah. that that cost us eighty seven hundred dollars. Right. Yeah. Right. Or sixty three. Right. Right. Yeah. Here's so that, and that's the programming thing I'm trying to figure out because we can we have enough information and Mark keeps good enough notes <coughs> and the Nemric system with Allison's capability there to 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 tell us that hey if you want to track that let's code it the right way and code it to right. this and then she can just push a button and tell you the answer. Yeah. The manual adjustment usually is in the labor part. <coughs> we kind of have to go extract those from the budget because those are all rolled into the regular, you know, 40 hour work week and we have to pull out so many hours, but. We're getting there. We're getting there. What's that? We're getting there slowly but surely we're getting there. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so I think that's, and then for example, the, the let, let's say it was $8,600 for the right of way clearing program yeah. we, sh we should be able to cut that in half at some point potentially and hope the program costs in half but you do it every other year or you do half of what you're doing every year mm -hmm. as a maintenance plan right now it's a very aggressive you know go back and get the whole right away it takes more time but if you get on a good schedule those costs should come down because it's not as um, there is a possibility we can get away doing it every other year at some point. Uh, right now we have it for two weeks. We could just slow the cycle down and go one week a year. And that's all that's needed. I to think that's... Or as an, you know, but if you don't know the truth, you don't know the cost, you don't want to um, guess at that stuff because you don't want to get behind either. That's right. Right. That's what I was right. saying. Oh, yeah. Right. 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 So, and they've done a, an excellent job in doing it. And then roadsides do look good. So continue on. And when we... I have the opportunity to come back one year. We can do it. You yeah. take, take that money and move it over to this project here you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, right, gives you some flexibility. Right, the overall expense just is something you gotta watch too. Cause I, I, I wish we had a end game for paving. As, you know, mm -hmm. as, as we get into this question about what the 225 needs to be, Every year, does it need to be 300? We were thinking close to 300, but depending on the treatment that you have to do on the roads, maybe 225 is where we need, and we just need this the small road projects to deal with the worst sections, and then yeah. we're into mm -hmm. basically right. an overlay plan. Some towns are into overlay and then grind because their their roads are getting high enough for the the drainage systems, especially in villages, it became a problem where you have to grind it first to get back to those grades. Otherwise, you do all your structures again over. Or have to raise them up by two or three inches every time. You don't want to do that. But <clears throat> so anyway, I'll, I'll talk to Mark about preparing the budget in that kind of slow transition, so that when we talk about what are you doing for gravel, 
What are you doing for paving? Well, we're not just crushing gravel at 30,000 every three years. We actually are spending this much a year, and this is the sweet spot that we want to be in. Mm -hmm. And we know it's done. Just like when we were trying to get the sidewalk reserve funding up to 25,000, we did five, 10, 15, 20, 25 was done. You know, and now it's 25 a year. But I think the highway budget can sort of get to those points. And if there's a major change, like I, I can think of some technology like the, if none of the trucks were on computer for salt and we made the change all at once, we do have a, a leveling of those expenses at some point because those are rapidly increasing. And if you're not doing things to keep the efficiency up, we could be paying double of, you know, if we weren't doing anything with the temperature rip gauges and the sensors and the report, we could pay, pay double of what we used to pay. Of course, reduce the rates. And now we were starting. But that's going in to be done before, before plow season or snow season. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah, but they're 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 they're. Last time I talked to them was like two weeks ago, and they were working on how to get it done. And was something away, Ryan, for getting computers on or order or something for the sensors? Uh, Mark's trucks all done. Mark French's trucks all done. Yours is being done, or the new one is on. The one supposed to be here Wednesday, I think. And I think Mark Lahoyers is going, he's going to look at mine to see which one he'd rather have, either one like Mark's. Oh, the, the style of it, yeah. Because they're two different systems. And then his is going down. So. But in your, and like I said, I'll talk, I need to talk to Mark about trying to figure out what this looks like, but it, it's more like, um, like Roger saying, call it something, and have that as the program, and have those in there that are planned so that you can spread out the work a little bit, and you don't get a spiky, you know, you're, you're in a deficit condition where you have to spend a lot of money all of a sudden. I'll stop up and see Mark, too, yeah, for him and I can have a chance to yeah, no, you sit can, down. And yeah, well, it's, I, I think it's, I think it's November 20th. First, I think. Let me check for a highway budget. I can't remember what that memo said, but whatever it is. I know you like thinking about November and hunting. I don't. November, I just go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. November 18th, Roger, is the yeah. first presentation of highway. Which is your next meeting, but it's some on the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that was all on that topic, just to, it's nothing okay. to act on or anything like that. Okay. Highway winter plow operators. I had a recommendation from Mark French that Roland Bogey be hired for a seasonal operator on call. I said, did Roland tell you that, or is that just you telling me to ask, tell Roland? <laughs> Thank you, Roland. That's terrific. I said, I'll see him Thank tonight. Thank you. No, I, yeah, I think he said I volunteer. I think I was glad he didn't volunteer. <laughs> so the, the plan would be that if one of the guys... Uh, but he doesn't, he doesn't do it at night. He's just going to do day shift. Day, daytime. Fair weather plowing. Yeah. Fair weather plowing. <laughs> Yeah, the other one's that guy out of Crassberry. Yeah, Mike, Mike Reno. Yeah, Mike Reno. He'll be out full time. Okay, now I've got a... And Blake Delisle's number three. So we have, we, have, we have the four main highway... Basically, Rolly would be like, if I was sick, I don't feel like I have to come in. Yeah. Go, go to Wilkin, I ain't got nobody up there. Yeah, they do. <coughs> Lucian. They do Lucian. I think they do now. Yeah. Yeah. The only... I get... Something on that it, it is I had some issues with that last year because I went back into the August or whatever that meeting was, and we when we hired Mike Reno for the operator, it was to remove snow, right? And I went on that and really come in and he said, listen, he says, you can't ask a guy, just come in, move stone, go home, move stone, go home, move stone, go home. You almost gotta get him, you almost gotta get him in 40 hours. Remember that conversation? I have no problem with that. But when he comes in 
And Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we have bluebird days and the greasing trucks and fixing lights and stuff and the snow's on the weekend and he's putting in 60, 70 hours. That's not right. And you had that talk with Mark French four or five times last year, but it, it fell on deaf ears, I guess. There's no, no need for a part-time person to be putting in 60, 70 hours. There are going to be weeks, yes, there's snowstorms. I agree with that. But, but if you know there's going to be a snowstorm Saturday or Sunday, and, and it's a, a beautiful day. Yeah, but how do you know how many hours we're going to work in that snowstorm? It, 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 Saturday or Sunday? It, it'll all pan out. Well, I, let me see. Are you, are you well, saying that well, we, you take today off. Let me see. When, when we hired, we're talking about a, this particular person, yeah. but it could be any person. Right. It doesn't matter. Right. Um, and they're part-time. Is that, are you guaranteed 40 hours a week? Uh, no, the letter of hire that we Ron, said, don't like that word, guarantee. No, there's no guarantees ever. Tried to erase that word uh, ten years ago. Taxes Excuse and death. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are. There are two. Taxes and death. So okay. <laughs> the letter of hire that goes out is basically says you're on call seasonal for plowing, winter maintenance at the direction of the of the um, the road foreman as right. needed. So okay. they have the option of saying no, I'm not coming in. Mark's been, and that's fine because we'll have three people to choose from potentially the idea is to have like five core people that are ready to go mm -hmm. in most storms but choose from the three now Michael Reno has agreed to be the steady person last year and we usually have that fifth person that's regular Mark French used to do that for the group so that we have basically a crew of five and two alternates if you will for any of the five that get sick or have a problem yeah. or get injured or whatever so we're the numbers work pretty well. The five hours get you to three, three and a half hours for the snow emergencies to get school open. Mm -hmm. You know, show up at three, have the roads open for the buses. If you went down to three people in the plows, we probably wouldn't be open until eight o'clock or something. So yeah. there's, a, there's a number. Well, there's another way of doing that too. Then if you want, if you're going to have three alternatives at forty hours, you're done. Call up, call up your uh, your, your next guys, and then they'll be on straight time. Right, so there, there's ways to manage this, the winter that are way different than the summer. In summer, you're dealing with projects and trying to get as much work done as possible. In the winter, you're talking about the buses, primarily, and having most of the roads cleaned up within a 24-hour window so that the roads are pushed back. So there's kind of two or three times that you would generally go out on the roads. Right. One is the opening the roads, two is pushing the back, and then three is the cleanup stuff at intersections and things, which often can take some, as much time as plowing the road. So you have those times where it's not just the storm event in the beginning, it's the ongoing work during the day to get ready for the next storm, including fixing your truck and repairing things and loading up the trucks, get them in the garage ready to go again. So it's not a, there is a core group of work, I would say, for the four plus five that has to be managed. The two that might come in during the event very easily could be the ones that are just gone when the emergency's over. And then you have your regular work, which might be doing intersections and repairing trucks that goes on after the non-emergency, when the non-emergency time is there. But the emergency time is when everybody has to be geared up during the event while it's snowing or icing until the roads are in good condition. And then you can maybe release the extra people. And that's what you're, you're talking about, this fifth person when is that fifth person released? Right. Regardless of what the, the schedule yeah, he's is. He's saying what you want to release at 40 hours. Uh, right now we have in the budget for that winter season, we budget for, this is not the guarantee, but this is just a budget for, is a terrible winter with 40 hours every, every week and 125 hours of overtime. So that's what's in the money part that's mm -hmm. in the budget for that fifth person. So it's almost a full-time, half-year person. Yeah. But that went way over that last year with your part-time person. Yeah, so, right. So then the, the question of managing and having the release time done on a good, regular basis mm -hmm. should be within that budget, I think. You know, the 40-hour right. uh, right. people have 250 hours, 300 hours now a year. Yeah. Right. And those core four folks should have a regular, busy winter season using up their 300 hours of overtime. Yeah, right. But the question of when do you release the fifth person is, is, 
is is a is a topic. <laughs> and then do you release them at a earlier time so he's not so that the crew's working a sixty hour week, they're working a fifty hour week. They're they're going home earlier than the other crew. <clears throat> because over the course of the year he only has 125 hours of overtime. Or do you keep working them on the same exact schedule as the four? And I, and I think what Dave's saying is a difference with that. It's a person. difference, right, right. And well, and particularly because you've got other options. Right. So you've got other people you can call in so that you're just paying it the so I don't, I don't, regular. My guess is no. I mean, he may not be around, or Blaine may not be around, yeah. or might but be the scoring out or not. The sky might fall too. So. Well, okay. you can't work on lights. No, well, that, that's right, it's might, but that's why those extra hours over time are there. So if that situation happens, right. but normally if you're if if you hit with if the fifth person hits forty <laughs> hours, then the first thing you want to check is to see if the other guys can fill it in, and and if they can, again the overtime is built in there, but but you want again it was way over last year and you don't want to, well I'm just looking at the financial side of it right right I I don't. Right. Right. I, I don't know this guy, I don't care who he is. No, that's why I say it's, it's just it's the fifth person. That's yeah. right. Right. Fifth Doesn't person. matter who it is. But I but I do think with all this that it should be talked about and going with the fifth person full time up there. I agree with Well yeah. 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 Well it's hold budget on just, just figure out what the contracts are gonna be. If if we're gonna contract out a bunch of work, do we need a fifth person? We need a fifth person. There's still a lot of stuff oh, yeah, that could I be think, done. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah. But, but still I, a lot of I do agree with Roley also, again, in renting a hole for a month in the, the summertime. By the time you get done vacations in the summertime, you're down to two people and you're down to yeah. three well, people. Well, Ryan hasn't well, worked for but a what, month and a half. But you know it's a. That way it is. I'll kid you, once you take half your summer road yeah. mowing. Yeah. Which is what, fourteen, eighteen thousand, whatever it is, and take out your 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 winter part timer. You're not really talking that much of a difference, other than insurances and right. Benefits. The money you're paying, right, right. Money out, same thing. Benefits, different story. Right. But you got a right. you got a for temporary person in there eight months out of the year, or already nine months out of the year, right? right. Well, I think Mark's comment on that was that the extra summer seasonal people that do the roadside mowing and come in for a big project or whatever those would stay as options so you right i'm just saying like our plow option people so the, the it, cost right? of going to that yeah. is well you would almost defeat your fifth time guy in summertime because now he's, he's spending half the summer mowing yeah you, you basically pay I mean, benefits I wanna, for the roadside i want to throw something else out there it's not the guy's fault that are working there but I have seen with my own eyes if there's people that come in here for safety, they're not going to meet the standards without the flaggers that they don't have. I'm and telling right. you, it's coming. And you still, yeah. Yeah. A lot of things has come in. Right. That's right. Christmas is, but we ain't going to worry about it today. That's right. Yeah. But I can tell you. Get through Halloween and things that's right. It cost you a lot more money in the long run. Now you tell me how. It ain't gonna work really. You tell me how uh, Eden does a flagging. You tell me how Montgomery does. I don't care what Montgomery does. This stuff. It can't. It, I don't care what Montgomery does. I'm concerned about Hyde Park. Well, let's go. Let's go when the follow Morrisville's thing and, and hire 18 people. I'm just saying that one person would be very useful in the town of Hyde Park, and the money is there to hire. Got it's been, well, been no. putting off for the last four or five years since <coughs> I've been on the board. Well, of course, the, finding the person will be the other, but... Yeah. So, and I assume Mark has talked about it. It makes sense. Is this one of these things we should just need to say, okay? Well, he's got, he's got the fifth person for half a year. Right. That they operate like that now. Yeah. Right. So you're talking about the summer months where the fifth person, if you use existing money, which is what Roland's suggesting, is a minor hourly wage increase to get to a summer fifth person. Except for the benefits would have to be added on that because we don't pay benefits to the people roadside mowing and other things. So we have the 16 hours of 
budget money for the summer. It's not 40 hours, but you make that up and add. And then you, if you don't use that 16 hours, you're talking about 40 hours of new money. Mm -hmm. So that using the 16 doesn't get you a lot more work hours though, because that work is going to be put back to what those part-timers were doing. Yes. So you're not, great, you're not gaining a lot by, by saying, we'll use the 16 that's almost there. That's what it's the dollars may be just slightly more to get to fifth, but you're, you're getting stability in the department with five people, but you're also potentially losing your, your unless you keep that money, which is you know, thirty or $40,000, if you keep that for those seasonal workers, <coughs> then you do gain on work. You, you will gain on work, because you'll gain a fifth person, plus you maintain your seasonal people. So easy, easy to get there in one step. You're talking under 30000 probably to add a fifth person. Right. If you had the fifth person, you wouldn't have to have any part time then, right? Well, that's what we're talking about. There's a trade off to, to yeah, add. Be, but between the two part I think what you're saying, between the two part times, right, there's no benefits. So between the two part times that add nine months or whatever it is, you wouldn't gain many more work hours. Work hours, yeah. But you would gain the expense of insurance and you, retirement and. Not, Dale does our mowing in the summertime. Mm -hmm. He's going to have to continue to do our mowing in the summer, summertime to, to get the use of that fifth man. Right. Right. Exactly. Oh, that's what you're saying. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 right. That's the that's the budget impact question of or whatever whatever it is. Have and we, it's what how many weeks is a month Dale's work? Yeah. Uh, five, six weeks. Yeah, five, and, five and, weeks. Six and weeks. we may but he doesn't say it's cheaper to farm it out. He don't work 40 hours right. a week. Either. No, he don't work 40 No, I think it's like three days a week. He does. No. Yeah. So that's, that's a no brainer. Yeah. Now, Roger wanted me to bring this up back when I, just before I got sick, and I did. With our last well, meeting, one last meeting when I had been here, July, <laughs> August, I don't know. But when we get talking about the winter maintenance guy coming back, mm -hmm. Roger felt as if there could be a problem with the union and that the guys, you know, would want to say, well, Jesus, he's going to get a dollar more. Maybe we want a dollar more. So I went up the next morning and talked to Mark I know that's a problem. French and uh, you know told him yeah. our concern. Yeah. And I said, Would you please talk to the guys? Which he did, right, Ryan? And said, Is that an issue or is that a problem? And he said that all the guys said absolutely not. Yeah. So I just wanna let Roger know that I yeah. did follow through. Well, that's right, because they're not right. getting any benefits, so it's uh, right. Well, that was actually, the second part of the question. We, we've had a set rate of 16 for all the, whatever the, whatever the walk roster is for the on-call. Mm -hmm. Adjusting that up to 17 was the second part of the question of the three. So for tonight, we just need to resolve that because I need to get those letters out <laughs> to the staff because it may snow whenever at this point. Oh, no. So if Roland's agreeable uh, just to be on the roster for in very infrequent calls, I guess that we would have three people on the, the roster, but one person, me, Michael Rado, being the full-time person, basically. You're rolling. Being that rolling. Being that fifth person. With Blaine Delisle. I think oh. those, are, those are the three names that we write letters for, and uh, Susan can sign it when they're drafted. At the, they get 17 plus five holidays, but that's all the benefits that those folks get right now. Okay. That it goes through the union for you? What's that? With the union, that those guys... Part -time. Don't Not the seasonal No, ones. no. Their seasonals aren't right. Only if they're coming year-round regular. So, do we ever want to decide the fifth person, or are we just going to keep throwing that one around? I think you're worth discussing, but it ought to be... On paper, black and white, what, what, what's the cost going well, I can, What I can do to help is look, I've seen two different options. One is getting that fifth winter person year round, what the cost could mm -hmm. be for that. And then the difference between using those summer seasonal to offset that cost or leaving them there. I can show you the two differences in the budget 
between those yeah. two options. Or, or the part of them we or need to be Or the third option would be mowing. modify. I could talk to yeah, Mark right. about what the seasonal yeah, summer so hours are and, and so see keep if he has any mowing, room. Right? Yeah, if he has room there, then we can push right. that as a third option. Right, okay. But okay. all or nothing on the summer seasonal to help with the fifth, and then if Mark has a third option of, well, I can, I can yeah. I need to die right. this much for bring my that back. For November. Yeah, well, it'll be part of the budget. Because, the well, the, exactly, because then we would roll that into next <clears throat> year's budget. Because mm -hmm. we'd have, yeah. we'd have our fifth person through the winter anyway, and then figure yeah, it out. We're talking about next summer. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But I think it'll help the discussion if you just see the cost. Cause yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. done. We'll do that. All and right. You're, and you're okay. yeah. You want to have a motion on the 17 for some winter oh, yeah. season? Okay. Uncle. Need a motion to have our winter seasonal at 17. Yeah, so move. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Personnel policies. So this is an ongoing discussion, but we had uh, a draft sent out, I don't know what date that was, uh, September 16th, it's just a strike yeah. version, yep. and I didn't know if there's any more sections to add or not add, there's not a lot of changes in this draft, but there's some, there's a huge section on the town vehicles, which is from DLCT's recommendation, how to deal with vehicle usage and seat belt safety and those kind of things. No huge rush on this because personnel policies could take a while anyway. But oh, I know it. If you don't have any other topics to look at, then then we don't. We, don't, we can just review it some more. Or why don't we review it and then it might even be worth. Oh, we got budgets to do. That's yeah. that's one of those you personnel policies right. doing oh, you in, right? <laughs> Thank you. See you later. Yeah, um, so it's sometimes it's a special meeting type thing. Yeah, it's just to sit policy. down and talk about and it. Just walk through yeah. it line by line. Yeah, yeah. That I think that's sort of what we need to do with that. Okay. So it's one of you just sort of need to focus on that sometime. Yeah. Work at a work meeting. Okay. Okay. Uh, that's the road class are getting to sit. Okay, we we we, 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 we did eight. Yep, you yeah. Can delete that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Got that one. Okay. So I did we'll do that one on you. Yes. Is the errors and emissions from yep. blisters? Oh, yeah. Okay. You did what on me? The road reclassification thing. Any we went back into session and we any did that and answered any and there wasn't. Yeah. Any changes? Nope. Good. Then. Error number of acres. Oh, look, okay. I can. You won't do it. I can if you're looking strong. Okay. Here's 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 one error of emission. There we go. Okay. So now when we aren't happy with plowing, we can yeah. call them over, right? <coughs> Where's this property? You know, Ron, that Randy Whittemore property. What's the name? Randy, Randy Whittemore. Randy Whittemore. That's uh, just north of the Lanter Farm on the left. Double mobile homes there there now. I don't know if you've yep. seen okay. them. Oh, 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 the yeah. new, uh, they put where James put in that new mobile home. Yeah. Okay. They, I don't think they removed the old one yet. They should be working on that. Today is. 21, right? So. Yep. Is that an action uh, thing that 
There's an admission, Ron. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Vote to yep. accept the, okay. you I, know. Make a motion to accept the Randy Whittemore deduction from 138.6 to 132. Second. Um, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Do we all have to sign it? Three at least. Yeah, okay, we're good. Let's see. We're more if you want to. Yeah, we're good. Here it is. I was looking for it. Oh, damn, I just lost him again. Okay, um, how about the town server? Yep, this purchase order proposed for $9,000 to replace the town server, which has failed, also to upgrade the firewall so we can't get breached, which you've maybe heard a story about Norwich and other mm -hmm. towns yeah. in the last couple of years that are having either person problems, their staff creates a problem, or servers aren't updated and patches, which are security measures, aren't done. So we do have the uh, offsite tech group that's monitoring systems for being current and safe and all that, but the equipment is also part of that security. So this is a security upgrade for the equipment. Uh, money's in the budget. We just had to pull it from a couple of line items. Okay. I'm gonna need it. Sir. Huh? So it doesn't we're gonna need it. Yeah. Oh, oh, what are you gonna do it if they don't? Yeah, what are you gonna do if you don't have any communications with the outside world? Well, that'd be another mm -hmm. approach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he got destroyed. Yeah. Got <laughs> with a couple of cans on it. Cut down on the budget. Yeah. <coughs> oh yeah, actually it might end up costing a lot more. Okay. Well, I don't got the money. We need to do it. Just move to approve the technology. Ooh. You want to you want to retrain in technology and go around and fix these things and get one hundred twenty five dollars. The only thing needs a ball peen hammer. Fix it right up. Pink. <laughs> so so I, I guess we need 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 a motion. <laughs> That wouldn't take you long, though. You wouldn't get an hour's pay for that. Motion to set the yeah. I, I have server. no patience at all when it comes to computer I, stuff. We have figured that part out. Rule and main so, motion. Yeah. You need a second? Second. So under discussion, normally you wouldn't see this because it's under the 10000 which is the new purchase right. order. But there's no, we there's, don't have a line. There's no budget for the town right. server replacement, so we are right. pulling from... So we'll have to be careful with, uh, like the IT line is three thousand dollars. It's done, that right? We have to make sure we don't spend that by June thirtieth if we can. But if those reserved items for that uh, get stressed, we'll let you know. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody want to abstain? Why should I? <laughs> <laughs> yes, but when, when, when that guy comes, see if he can come up to help hook up my printer. Too. <laughs> oh, I got one. Of my, my printer won't print certain things. No. You're right. Get them in my house, too. All right, we'll ship that back down. <coughs> okay, and then the contract for the Grange performance. Uh, there's a couple spots on this contract. This is our normal contract with um, people that don't have workers' comp. So we have to go oh, through the okay. BLCT hurdles and have them sign all waivers and their life awake if they ever get hurt. Um, Abby Sherman performed at the, the Grange event a couple weeks ago now. But okay. She signed all the paperwork. We just haven't had a meeting with the select board. No. Yeah. Yeah. That's not, that's not who you're. Who it is. Okay. So I guess we just need to say it's okay, right? That they've already done it. <laughs> yeah. This is part of the audit process. So when VLCT comes through, they're going to want to see that uh, 
We had it Contracts all there. Contracts are in place. Okay. All right. Do we need to move on it or just sign it? You should have a motion to sign her contract. Okie dokie. Need somebody to move that we sign her contract. Make a motion sure. to move to sign the contract. Second. No. All in favor signify by saying aye. <laughs> aye. Anybody opposed? I always love these. Okay. You know these computer stuff. You know when they first come in, they're going to save money and stuff. Oh, oh yeah. Paper. And, and paper. The biggest paper. paper. It takes four times as much paper to do that. Yes, oh, it does. And, and, and all these servers and updates and everything goes with it. The motor vehicle updated theirs. That was their big thing. They oh, yeah. save a lot of paper. Oh. People and workers, and they lose twice as much paper. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, and they're behind. I'm not so sure yeah, about yeah. time either. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, that was the Grange Performer. All right. Um, okay. All right. Well, how about re we'll review the minutes? We don't have the Eden Select Board ones yet, right? From that meeting. Nothing. No. Well, we'll get we'll get them eventually. I just found a contract amendment with du Dubois King, which I think just has a quick motion in the minutes. They needed more time. We had extended right. them to October 31st. Now right. they want extension to November 22nd. Yeah. So because of the contract, we have to have a motion to allow November 22nd. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, you can quickly. get us together to talk. Okay. Need a motion to extend their contract for another month. So moved. Second. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Thank you. Okay, see, and I saw the Grange Performer, and that took me to the Grange Roof. All right, let's let's do the all right. We'll yeah, do the minutes. The one first. oddity in the uh, yeah. Okay, review the minutes. Okay, right. September No, we'll work on that. Make a motion mm -hmm. to set the September 16, 2019. <laughs> favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Okay. Now, in reviewing things we need to sign, I guess we need to have a conversation about the roof up at the Grange, right? Uh, I brought it to your all attention because right. I get that uh, email from Al Spitzer, who's like the project manager yeah. for the yeah. Historic yeah. Sites Committee, they who was that. concerned about uh, con concerned about confirming the amount of additional work. Yeah, and he does, and he seems to not uh, not know the best way to deal with that. So I, I'm I'm almost thinking that you, if the board. He was going to go up and look, but he has a hard time quantifying new versus old and what the value of that was. And it, I, 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 do you have a little faith in your contractor? Probably until you're proven wrong, right? Or do you send up a sort of an inspector person to go up and confirm and meet with him and have him explain everything that was done so that Al feels better about the work that was done? I, I, Al's the only one that's been on site, so that's why. Yeah. I, I, now that shouldn't be there because I specifically remember asking for a member a, a uh, performance. Uh, what now? What they're going to do? What they're going to place? They're going to place the wood and stuff. 
And it, it was all on a piece of paper. You remember that? Yep. Yeah, I, I don't think they could tell you how many boards they're going to have to replace underneath. I think that's what he's. Because yeah. I got. I think that's right. what he's up to. I don't think he feels that he used. Yeah, we didn't know. We didn't have a good enough scope of work from that. He used time. enough yeah. furniture, if ever you want to call it, that was there that had to replace for putting the plywood down. But he should be able to tell the new from the old. It ain't very hard to tell. I wouldn't think unless he got some secondhand stuff somewhere. Yeah, I think I think my suggestion is that Al seems to be looking for some help, and maybe if if I or a board member could just go up and meet with the roofer guy and just have him show us what's up there. And Roger's right there. Yeah, you're the yeah. Either Roger, or, that's your expertise, anyways, isn't it? Roger can do it. That's his responsibility, right there. He should be taken care. of. Now, do you still have that paperwork yeah. at that special meeting that we had? Yeah, we have a, well, we have a, we had a request for proposals based on the scope of work is what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And then we got the bids and the bid said, we can't, basically, we can't predict what the amount of rotted boards are because we didn't tell them that ahead of time. We, we knew there might be, but we didn't go through the whole roof structure to make sure that we knew absolutely what we were going to find when the sheathing came off. So that, I, there was no way to know that. But we don't want to put new roof on old wood either. See what I mean? So yeah. if he's if he's the professional, I'll, I'll have to look, but I'm not going to walk the whole attic all the way down through there. I'll tell you that now. And said they use they use smooth nails to hold the steel down. No, I think time that whoever put some shingles or something on there on the whatever, porch on, on the porch. The whoever porch. put the shingles down on the porch oh, or on, on the shakes. Yeah, they, didn't on the shakes. The rib, they didn't use the red nail, so it's oh. they use they didn't use them. Um, yeah, I did. Ring tight nails. So I, I think I did I, see it. I just, I, just, I don't want to close out the project and have this question. Of, you know, even if it's Al's question himself, right? Because he was yeah, yeah, because he's right. He's asking. But at least to let him know we heard of, and we'll go check it out. And most most well, times check it out. I'll take Dan Heath with me. He's the lumberman. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it, it's just it's more of a. But I think that's what he's talking about is the rough boards underneath, but. I don't know how far we can see what it was. Well, I'm, I'm hoping that he's done this week, if not tomorrow. So that would be a good project to check. We're thinking about town meeting day coming up, that we could check that off with the deed, which would be mm -hmm. good, good success. Well, and what, because in this, in this pile, <laughs> okay, there there's a 50% payment in there. Well, well, there's, there's the northern roofing and construction. Yeah. Award minus three, but okay, there's a... There's like eleven hundred thirteen hundred dollars worth of boards there or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's one for, let's see, I was just looking to see how many... See if I can find another one in there. She showed it to me the other day. Okay, I got... Oh, would that be to northern... Roofing is on looking everything just from them. Mm. See, she had it on the, she had paid them on the, not this week, but last week when they came down to check the thing off. Yeah, yeah, and there's a. Which would have been last, there we go. last Monday, not this Monday, but. One before, right? Last Monday I came down and I saw it. Was, I can't remember the figures. Over a thousand dollars on the on the boards. Right. There's, that was extra. Because there's still there's still one check here, so we can. Yeah, there's. there's <coughs> that one, so we can. I anticipate four payments in total. One, the thirty-five percent down payment's been made. Yeah. Then there was a second payment, which was fifteen percent. Which got them to it should be at fifty percent complete. Yeah. We paid them fifty percent, so that thirty five plus fifteen got them to fifty. Then these that's where he added twelve hundred something for extra boards. Another request came in for seventy five percent payment, which had thirty eight hundred dollars of extra boards and work. And then there's gonna be a final payment of ten thousand to close out the whole project, which will be done upon final inspection. So we're more or okay. less we're more or less talking about the ten thousand dollar payment, not okay. not whatever's in this set of Okay. 
So I would definitely hold the 10,000 until the board is happy with, and no questions need to be mm -hmm. answered. Okay, great. So rather than worry about what's in these orders, I, I know that there's a little over 10,000 in the final payment, which he has an invoice for you. All right. Plus then we also have that the whole thing's going to cost more than. Yeah, these, the uh, $7,500 estimate for the quieting the title was 7,100. So there's almost the full amount there. And then there's this project is probably going to be five or 6,000 more than originally estimated, so. I've never seen anything built yet that didn't run over, so. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's true. <clears throat> well, but I think part of that, and just being aware and trying to keep within the budget is part of, I'm sure, Al's question about, you know, is this guy overcharging for what he's, you know, for mm -hmm. what he's done? And, and again, that's... It's kind of like a right. normal question to a certain degree. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because you're not there every day. Well, that's they, right, you don't. They know exactly what they're doing, and they could probably walk you through everything that they've done. Right. And, you know, but... Well, that's the thing. Roger going up and... I think so. Take, I think take the lumber settle. person with it, and then that'll be... That'll settle, okay. Because yeah. if there are any questions, that'll yep. be the crew that has them, and we can ask them, and we've still got the $10,000 we can do, we can negotiate with. Don't forget the Patriots are playing soon, so we have to keep Ooh. moving. Okay, Ooh, right, all right. Let's well, <laughs> football. Well, come on, go see them lose. No, yeah. No. They might lose to the Jets. Yes, you're, you're correct. I'm okay. kind of hoping that as a Giants fan. That they, lose, they lose at least once this year. There we go. We'll send them down there, because this is just, those. these are the ones that need to be signed, and these are just, if any, man. Susan did busy. Those you already done? Yeah, yeah. yeah these, these are all the things that you, you know, that are the under the whatever. Don't sign, review only. Didn't see anything terrible there if anybody wants to look at them or the things, that, you know, that, that she sends out. Well, I like that I way. The system she, seems to be working well. Sends out. I can sit yeah. in my chair. Even had a question. He emailed her. She emailed me back. Yeah. No, no. I think it's, it's, working, it's, it's working well. Oh, there's another one. Okay. Uh, one executive session request, if you so desire. Yeah. Okay. No. Don't forget about the Um. other other business. Okay. We're getting the, just a second here. We're getting the town orders all signed. Make a motion to the town orders. Come on. Second, second it. Okay. <laughs> all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anybody oh, opposed? Still signed. I didn't. Yeah, well, that's, that's okay. I didn't we're sign it either. I, I haven't yet, yet either, so. Yeah. Not. Sorry, um, around you. No, no problem. Okay, so then I get see that'll stop while we're finishing that part. We're going to stop. We need to go into executive session.